<sighs> Such a welcome sight. Oh, we made it out of dog leg. Horrific. Waterfall climbing and scree. <laughs> Never again. So the idea came to me about 10 years ago uh, when I was looking at the Scottish Mountaineering Club uh, Monroe's guys and I noticed that all of the Island Monroe's were grouped together in one chapter um, and I quickly told Mike about it and the idea that maybe we could do a continuous journey across all of the Sky Monroe's and then onto the um, Ben Moore as well and obviously because of the fact that you had the mountain um, the mountains on sky, then a long section of road, and then the sound of mull. I thought it'd be good to do in triathlon style. So yeah, how could I say no to an offer like that? It sounded like an amazing adventure. Um, I'm not really much of a cyclist or a swimmer though, so the sheer distances involved were a little bit worrying. So in order to link sky and mull, we were going to start at Glenbrittle campsite on the Isle of Sky and begin by climbing up to the Coolin Ridge. So the Coolin Ridge, I think, is arguably one of the toughest mountain days out in the UK. It's got 11 Monroes along the main ridge. And then after that, we would drop down to the Canasunary Valley, almost to sea level again, to go up and over Blavin, the final Monroe. So that's about 33 kilometers and 3,300 meters of ascent. Then immediately into the overnight bike ride, which is 244 kilometres, going through Shield Bridge, Invergarry, Fort William, Loch Linney, then up and over to Loch Lean. Then a two and a half kilometre swim across the Sound of Mull, followed by a final bike ride of 24 kilometres to Deseg, and then 966 metres up Ben Moore to finish. There were two main logistical things that we really had to get right. One was the weather. Uh, we needed perfect conditions on the cooling in order to move fast. And also we had to hit the slack tide at Loch Aline for 12 in the afternoon on Sunday. Otherwise we risked either getting swept up or down from the position where we wanted to land on Mull. So the weather was awful, truly, truly awful. It was the worst conditions I think we could have asked for. Um, <laughs> so there was just water streaming off all the rocks on the cooling. Um, it was raining for most of the cooling ridge. Um, so I think the weather was horrendous for the cooling ridge. It really slowed us down. But then actually, for the rest of it, the weather was actually quite nice. You come back down? No. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, it did. I remember which one. If you just reach across to that foothold, I don't know where you were, but... I went lower down. Get your weight on your feet there and it's higher. But it's just a bit slippy. <laughs> In pin, going well. Wonderful conditions on top of Skira Banning Peak. Lovely times ahead. We've got Skira Greta, Skira Vati, Brook Free, Ambastia, and Gillian to go. And then we'll be heading down to Gap Laven. Having, having a wonderful time. Slip and slide. <laughs> yeah. Coming up to the summit of Skua Greta, we finally got a little clearing from the mist. 
rock is greasy though today. Still a wonderful day on the Coolin Ridge. So Mike and I go back right the way back until we were babies, basically. We, we uh, grew up together in Loch Heron in the northwest uh, of uh, Scotland, northwest Highlands. Um, yes, yeah, so we've known each other a long, long time and uh, all the way through university. And um, yeah, we've had many, many adventures together and he's definitely my best friend. Nice one, Mike. That's number seven. Yeah. Right, let's keep moving. <laughs> Task master. So there's no one I would trust more to follow in such atrocious conditions on the Coolin than Alex. He's got an encyclopedic knowledge of the route. So we basically had no route finding issues at all. But in the conditions, it was pretty apparent the consequences of any small slip or fall. But yeah, we just got on with it and tried to make the best of the situation, I think, as we always do when we're together in the mountains. Scurivati, first top. So definitely far less than ideal conditions <laughs> for today's ascent. But luckily this bit's the nice gabbro, so it's uh, fairly grippy today. <laughs> Nice. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Say something inspirational. <laughs> Pretty good. Having a wild time here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think this much water has come off the cooling all summer. <laughs> across the untracked wilds of the Camasunary Valley to um, Pine Blavin and heading into the valley. Um, glad to be on flat ground again, but it's really boggy and there's no path. So yeah, and on into the night, I think. The most important thing was to have our support team beside us the whole way and they were amazing throughout the whole thing. Making sure we had enough fuel and real food was very important as well. You know, both of us doing it on a vegan diet, we wanted to make sure we had lots of real food and weren't having too many gels and everything. So being part of the support team was a lot of fun, um, but it was a lot more challenging than I expected it to be. Um, and of course, we're operating from a, from a camper van, which had all the cooking facilities we needed, uh, but we had like all the food in the back, we had the bikes, and then myself, Andrea, and uh, Andy from South Sky Cycles were all crammed into the front seat. Alex and Mike had gone way over their predicted time on the Coolin Ridge. So we've got ahead to the Cull just before that steepening up there. It's a bit foreshortened at the moment. If we make a beeline for that, then we can see where the gully in the north face goes. And we had been discussing in the van, the support team had been saying, I think 1 a.m. was the cutoff. And when we eventually heard their voices and saw the head torches coming towards us in the car park at quarter past 12, we knew that we were gonna, they were gonna make it and we just needed to do a quick turnaround and get them on the bikes and on the road and, and we were just gonna, we were gonna make back some time. The lowest moment for me was definitely the overnight cycle. My legs just wouldn't do what I wanted them to do. I just couldn't keep up with the speed that we needed to do. You know, despite all the encouragement and all the help from the support team, I just wasn't able to do the speed. So at that point, I really thought I was going to be unable to complete the whole challenge. Um, but luckily, when the sun came up um, and, you know, Steve was doing an amazing job helping us um, in cycling with us and um, giving us loads of encouragement. Once the sun came up and Steve got a pace going, we, we were all right. We managed it. Oh, 
Leben. hill by far. <laughs> So things got pretty exciting towards the end of the cycle. We arrived in Loch Aline with 15 minutes to spare for the slack tide. And yeah, we were pretty exhausted by that point. So we'd been on the go, I think, for about 26 hours. And the swim across the Sound of Mull was basically the final hurdle. Uh, we knew that if we could do the swim successfully, then we'd definitely finish. So yeah, there was nothing else to do but jump in. And I'm hoping that my swimming muscles are going to activate. You will find your way. Oh my god. Across broken ground, muddy trails, and summits in your way. And I will save you a seat. As long as it takes for us to finally meet in an old town bar. Fireside and whiskey and tales all alone. So the challenge to me meant a lot because it had been 10 years in the making um, and we also had, you know, we had, um, so, so it had been 10 years in the making and um, it also meant quite a lot because um, with my dad passing away the year before, um, he used to do a lot of these challenges, a lot of these um, big endurance events. Um, <clears throat> and it was quite nice to complete it in his memory as well. So it meant a lot to me in that respect. Mind will make your body pay for the sins and the suffering you long to confess. Absolutely loving the sound of Mel. <laughs> <laughs> About halfway across. <laughs> we would be moving a bit faster, but Mike's insisting on videos. <laughs> oh, If anybody knows Mike and Alex, uh, or you've met them or you know them personally, you'll know that they are both incredibly optimistic people. Uh, they're very alike in that sense, very um, laid back, uh, very positive. And I really believe that that's one of the main reasons uh, they managed to make it through this challenge. I would say 85% of the time they were, it was party atmosphere. Run mall. The support team and us, we all worked really well together. It was just a really, it was a lovely atmosphere throughout, which was fantastic. Um, and everyone played their part um, really, really well. So. Being part of the support team was overall just a, so much fun. Um, I think my biggest takeaway, although it was challenging at times, is the camaraderie of the team. So it was amazing to feel the sense of community around the challenge, but also to see all the donations coming in from all over the world for the Martin Moran Foundation. Yeah, I think it was really special. I'll make your body pay For the sins and the suffering you long to confess Let the mist wash them away 
Shed your skin and shake out the sand from your hair in an old town bar. Fireside and whiskey and tales of our Lord. Wait.